Why do some people commit violent acts while others resist even the darkest impulses? Could the answer lie deep within the brain in patterns we can't see with the naked eye? Advances in neuroscience are shedding light on how biology influences behavior, challenging our traditional ideas of choice and accountability. What if the roots of violence are not just in the heart, but in the intricate wiring of the mind? And how might this change the way we understand responsibility and justice? Welcome to Life TFA, life thought, felt, and acted. I'm Amit. And with over 45 years of experience in psychology and behavioral sciences, I'm here to explore the depths of the human mind with you. Today, we'll dive into one of the most fascinating research in psychology. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Mind Unveiled, where we explore the mysteries of the human brain and behavior. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of neuroscience and crime. We'll explore groundbreaking research by Adrian Rain that uses PET scans to uncover the brain's role in violent behavior. Ever wondered if the brain can influence criminal responsibility? Let's find out. Adrian Rain's research focuses on two groups of individuals, those found not guilty by reason of insanity, or NGRI. These individuals committed crimes but were deemed mentally unfit to fully understand or control their actions. And those convicted of similar crimes, but without such claims, referred to as the non-NGRI group. To study the differences between these groups, Rain used positron emission tomography, or PET scanning. So what exactly is PET scanning? A PET scan is a type of brain imaging that lets us see how different parts of the brain are functioning. It works by injecting a small amount of a radioactive substance called a tracer into the bloodstream. This tracer travels to the brain and highlights areas of activity by measuring glucose consumption, basically how much energy each part of the brain is using. The more active a brain region is, the more energy it consumes and the brighter it appears on the PET scan. By comparing brain activity in NGRI and non-NGRI individuals, Rain uncovered key differences in areas linked to decision-making, impulse control, and emotional regulation. One of the tasks Rain used to study these brain differences is the continuous performance task. This is a test designed to measure attention and impulse control. In this task, participants are asked to focus on a sequence of images or letters and press a button whenever they see a specific target. It sounds simple, but it requires sustained attention and self-control to respond correctly while ignoring distractions. Now here's where it gets interesting. During the continuous performance task, Rain's PET scans revealed that people in the NGRI group showed reduced activity in the prefrontal cortex, the brain's control center for decision-making and impulse regulation. Meanwhile, areas like the amygdala, which processes emotions, showed abnormal activity in NGRI individuals. These patterns suggest that their brains might not function in a way that supports normal self-control or emotional balance. So what does this mean Rain's research challenges how we think about responsibility and mental health in the justice system? If someone's brain is wired differently, should they be held to the same standards of accountability? And how can this information help us prevent violent behavior in the future? Thanks for joining us on this journey into the brain's role in crime. If you found this as fascinating as I did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into the mind and behavior. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think brain differences should change how we view responsibility in criminal cases? See you next time on Mind Unveiled.